All right, so we're working. Um, that's a good start. Uh, this is just the type of thing where we might see a, a, a stressed element here. Um, so if we imagine a, a kind of crank arm thing, Yeah, that'll do. Such that uh, there's some force on it in the Z direction out there at the end of the crank arm. Now maybe this is part of a, a crank shaft and that's a, a piston force that would be feeling there or something. Who knows? All kinds of ways we could possibly find something like this. So that load there is 150 pounds. It's at the end of the, an arm that's 18 inches. This part of the arm is 14 inches. And there's a point right here that uh, is a distance four inches up from the, from the bottom and in the front right there. That also matters as, as uh, hopefully we've seen. So four inches up uh, on, the, on, the, on the front facing the z-axis direction is uh, is a point where we want to see uh, uh, what kind of stresses are on that element. So, uh, you can imagine a, a little horizontal cross section there. What I'll do is blow that piece up. Remember, a lot of times what we do is actually take an imaginary cut through the material. So now this is four inches up there, that's the z-axis, that's the x-axis, y-axis is there, and we have a little element right there, and we want to see what the stresses are on that. and determine the principal planes and the principal stresses. Remember, that's what we were looking at Friday, this idea that uh, this XY direction, if that's the only direction we look at, and we only look at the normal stresses and the shear stresses there, then we're going to miss some of the uh, directions where there are actually more greater shear stresses, greater normal stresses, than there would be uh, normally. So we have to be careful um, in how we look at this. All right, um, there should be, uh, should be not a, a, a great bit of question here what kind of internal forces we're gonna see there due to this load. This, this 150 Z direction force is also gonna be seen as a 150 pound shear across the face there. The fact that this 150 pounds is down 18 inches is going to cause this whole thing to twist in that direction. It's going to cause a torsion. Uh, one way we draw that is as a as a, as a, a vector using the right hand rule. And then the fact that this 150 pounds is uh, a certain amount above 
our point of interest is going to also cause a moment. Let's see, if, uh, if we move this to here, and then include the moment there, then the right-hand rule would put it something like that. So if it would help. Kind of showing the torsion and the moment in, in two ways. Maybe just call this P, it's got to be 150. Does that seem about right? Is that kind of what you'd see with it as well? I hope. So if we uh, if we get a good direction on this thing, which direction did I use? Yeah. We'll now look at this element. Remember, we've been looking at the element, uh, looking down the z-axis. So we have. then our element is going to look like that. That's, that's a, a little view at this element looking down the z-axis, right at that element. We want to see what then, uh, what are the, the, the normal and shear stresses. And then we want to look and see what do we find when we go to the principal plane direction. Remember, those are the directions where we see greater shear, greater stress than before. So let's see. We're we'll looking down here. Um, what x direction stress, normal stress, are we going to see? Remember, normal stress is just simply whatever load there is in that direction divided by whatever area is carrying that load. So what would that stress be? What load is there in the x direction? Moment. Uh, moment's not this type of load though that we we'll put in here. There isn't any. There isn't any. Uh, make sure you know what the bending and the like is, but those are all in the other direction. So that happens to be zero. In the y direction, well, in the y direction, that is where we have the moment. So the, the way this thing is loaded with that direction moment, we know that an element on the front here is going to be in tension, and an element at the back is going to be in compression, because this, this arm is going to tend to bend like that. Uh, the, the upright part of the arm is going to, to bend back in the Z direction, which is going to cause tension along the front here, compression along the back there. So we do expect to see uh, tension like that at that front element. And then the torsion, the way that's twisting, we can see it's going to try. If you can even imagine we inscribe a little square there. What would happen to it? Because of that torsion, it's going to drag the top that way. The bottom, imagine it's stuck to the piece, so it would, uh, it would stay there. And then so we expect some kind of shear stress something like that. Oh wait, 
like, no, that's not the shear stress of the line. The torch is what we're looking at. And so we need to find out what those three pieces are. And then we can, this, this, this is the type of thing we've been doing for a couple of weeks. So then we can put it together with the stuff we did Friday of looking what the principal planes are, principal, principal strains and the like. All right, so let's see. We're going to help speed you up a little bit. Let's make sure. Uh, this moment is the 150 times the 10 inch moment arm it's got. So we can, we can work on that 150 pounds, 10 inches. C is, remember, the maximum distance Oh, I didn't give you the diameter of that thing. 1.2 inch diameter. All the way. So then what is C? Half of that. The radius, 0.6. And then do you remember what I is for a circular piece. It's pi over 4 r to the fourth. And so we have all those little pieces. All right, everybody agree with each of those pieces? And then the torsion is the 150 out of this 18 inch moment arm. Rho is again the same 0.6 inches, the radius. And J is what? One half pi r. So we can put in each of those little pieces. Make sure all the numbers are right. Yeah. Now we can put them in a circle, whatever. those pieces yet? Sigma Y 8.84 KSI and 7.96 Plus or minus? Does everybody agree that these directions 
are okay. The easiest way to see is this torsion. You know, it's going to drag the top across there relative to the bottom being twisted. Uh, so that element's going to be twisted like that. So we can fairly easily place these two and then those two have just got to balance that because we have to sum the moments and the forces as well. So is this as drawn, seems like the orientation's right. Is that a plus or a minus? Because remember, we need that now for uh, calculating the principal stresses. That's positive. All right, so we can we can now do a little bit with the uh, with the rest of it. A uh, couple things now. Remember that we need now that we've got those. We'll need sigma average. Sigma diff, kind of one I uh, made up, but it's useful because it repeats itself in those those equations. Um, it's also something we need for the uh, for the Mohr circle if you want to draw that, which we will. The two together are a big help, I think. Remember, sigma average is the center of the circle. And then the square root of sigma diff squared plus tau xy squared is the radius of the circle. want to use uh, Word or some drafting program or something to draw a more circle. It's easiest to, to draw the circle, figure out what some of the values are, and then put in the axes and some of the points, and uh, it just makes for a better drawing. It's, it's really hard to start with the points and then draw the circle when you're just trying to get an idea, a picture of what's going on. All right, so the, where's the center of the circle, the sigma average? Uh, 8.84 divided by 2. So that's at 4.42. And uh, sigma diff, I don't know if I have that value. Didn't actually write it down. So R, what do you have for R? Right. 
so now we can we can uh, start sketching in some of the values then this is 4.42 remember the x-axis is any normal stress value we have and now the radius then 9.1 plus the Four point four two gives us thirteen point five two as the maximum stress and the minimum stress you get. Minus four point six eight. So now we know our our y axis. A little bit different than we draw things normally. We usually put down the axes, but it's just so much easier to draw the circle first and then put in the, the points you know. How, how did you know that was a good place to line up time? Sorry? How did you know that that was a good place to put up um, time? Because there's 4.42, and then it'd have to be about halfway in between these two. Oh, right, okay, so it's the zero point. Yeah. That's all. Simple as that. No, no magic to that. And then remember, we can plot one point to help us determine. Uh, when you do this tangent two phi, uh, you don't necessarily with the calculator, but remember, you do get two angles because the tangent repeats itself. So you should get. Uh, A value for that, but then you can check it on more circle if you if you indeed have the correct one. So what did two feet come out to be? The angle? Uh, 61. Minus 61? Minus. Minus 61. And so theta P is minus 30.5, but we can check that uh, by actually plotting the point sigma x tau xy. So sigma x is 0, tau xy is 7.96. Well, that's got to put us right about here. And that's the point, the book called point A. Then that angle from there to the x-axis is 2 theta p. And that looks like it's about 60 degrees or so, and it's in our minus direction. So that, that helps us determine uh, everything we need to know about theta p. So what else we got? Oh, we had R. Remember, R now is the maximum shear stress. Let's put it over there. It's hard to know what that means there. All right, let's see what else we can make of this then. Oh, remember there was also a theta S angle which is 90 degrees off of theta P. Remember that's the angle where we'll see no shear stress and uh, maximum and minimum Um, normal stresses. Alright, so 
our original load element. was like that. Uh, what was sigma y? 8.8. Yeah, 8.8. And this was 7.96, if I remember. And now at an angle of minus 30 degrees, we can draw another element direction because that's theta p minus 30 degrees, something like that. And remember what we see in that direction? What do we see in this theta p direction? That's where we see the sigma max, which is 13.52. And the sigma min, we're actually uh, right on this axis, which is much smaller and negative, so we know it's compression. And no shear stress, since we're on right on the x-axis. Theta S, if you remember, is uh, just 45 degrees <coughs> from theta P, or on this diagram it's 90 degrees, so it's that uh, sort of opposite yield on the spoke. And so that comes out to be what? About 15 degrees, somewhere real close to 15 degrees. What do we see in that element direction? Shear stress. That's where the shear stress is maximum and the normal stress is the same on each phase and is equal to sigma average, which we know is positive, so we can draw it as a, a tension. And then the uh, shear stress is, uh, what is the max? 910. So I find it easier to draw the elements that way, then you've got all three one nice little drawing and see what the angles are. Everything tends to match up a little bit. This works better for me. If you see you see it some other way, no sweat. And so what's that? That's 14.5. Remember theta S and theta P are 45 degrees apart. Is that what you got for theta S from that? Okay. Yep. You probably have stated this a lot. This is probably one question. But when there's a maximum stress, does that mean the other one has to be the minimum stress? Yes. Okay. Yep. So 
the legitimate work for taking these two points. And that's at an angle. Remember, this is our operating point. The, the originally loaded point is right here. And then uh, an angle from that is when we hit this x-axis and we have the maximum normal stress, minimum normal stress, and no shear stress because we're right on that axis. So, <clears throat> with the equations and the circle together, you can pretty much get uh, all things you need. In fact, you don't even need all of the equations now since uh, since it all comes from the two of them. Once you get uh, sigma average and R, you've pretty much got the entire circle. Then all you need to double check is, is where point A is. Now remember, A is sigma x tau xy as plot from the original direction. <clears throat> okay. The Go ahead. Sure. Look, you know the the nine point one for the um, shear max. Uh huh. Does that have to be down there because it's positive? Does it matter? Does it what? Is it negative up on the top? Like oh, on the top? Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that should be uh, a negative. But it, it's plus and minus right. nine ten, and you can see that that the way this was loaded, that those shears are going to match that loading. Uh, in the same way. Plus, don't forget we're only a little bit off of that should be actually two beta s. All right. Pat, got a hand up? You never uh, ask questions. This yeah, is cool. Possibly. You got R to be 9.1, right? Yeah. How can I get a 6.25? Sigma diff. Your, your no, sigma diff. Yeah, sigma diff. That would be negative 4.4. No. Square. And then it's squared. Yep. And then the sigma average is 4.4 as well. Squared. Oh, it's 10. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was putting the sigma average in there also. Instead of tau as well. Yeah, sigma average is 9.1. Sigma average is 9.1. Yeah. So it's not negative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sigma average is positive. Well, it gets squared anyway, so it doesn't matter. In this case, sigma diff and sigma average are the same, right? Yes. Yeah, well, uh, opposite signs, but when they get squared, they're the same. So you're okay here now? Yep. Just a little math thing. All right. Any questions before we take our next step with it? Okay. So the very real possibility, of course, is that our elements are not loaded in only two degrees, but might be in three. So what do we do with three-dimensional stresses? We can, we can certainly have the possibility here of some kind of x-direction stress, normal stress, Y direction and a Z direction. I happen to draw them all positive, but it doesn't matter. And then, of course, the the uh, attendant shear stresses. And to simplify things, we'll we'll do problems where there is no. Z, Z face stresses. So that's tau in the uh, X or Y direction on the Z face. 
equals zero. So this gives us the possibility that there are greater stresses than we'd see if we only paid attention to the x, y directions like we just did. Now the problems we've been doing, we only looked at the x, y directions, we didn't look at the z direction. So we, uh, we have to make another step with it. So let me let's put some numbers to it. Uh, we'll call sigma y 36 megapascals. Sigma x is 72. Tau xy is minus. So these are drawn in the wrong direction for the actual numbers we're putting in here. And then we'll let sigma z, what we haven't considered before, to just be 10 megapascals, positive 10. Okay, to put some numbers to it. All right, first thing we do is what we normally do in the x, y direction. So, um, We come up with the principal direction, and uh, it is very helpful on this to do more circle. Um, it doesn't get terribly complicated, so it's not too big a deal. So figure out these things real quick, just using the x, y directions. Then we can plot more circle. When we got those values, remember the centers of sigma average. So you guys and gal do that. Determine the principal directions, uh, principal planes, and the uh, max min stresses. Tau x y. So now our 
x-axis, if that's the area, it's right about there. Yeah. Minus, well, so that's minus 30 on that radius. Okay, let's put in our point x to uh, just help make sure we've got the right tangent or the right uh, uh, theta p. Minus 1.33 for that. What'd you get for then theta p? All right. Double check that on the circle by plotting the point uh, A, which is sigma x tau x y. So sigma x is 72. So what that's about here. Oh, it's minus. Uh, what, minus 24, yeah, so that looks about right. Something about there. And from there back to the x-axis is 2 theta p. That looks like about 45 degrees, half of that minus 45, half of that's about minus 20, so it looks okay. All right, so that's stuff we've all done before. Now, theta z. And uh, as we're doing it here, we have no shear stress on that face, so we don't have to redo the entire thing. It's very simple. You take theta, uh, uh, sorry, not theta, sigma z. Take sigma z and plot it on the same uh, circle. So remember, sigma is on the x-axis. So point uh, 10 will be right about there. That then gives us another circle. So that's our true sigma min because it's less than what we got with just the x, y directions, which was 24. Sigma max didn't happen to increase on this one, but if sigma z had been greater, then we had to plot it out here. Now we know that we have a greater shear normal stress, a greater normal stress in that direction. Who's inside the circle of matter? What, sorry? If it was inside, would it change anything? Uh, in that case, no, it wouldn't. Then the, the circle would be on the inside here. And you'd still be within the original sigma max and sigma min. And then, just to make things exciting, we have now a third circle. Not too bad. That about as hard as it gets to draw circles freehand is doing something like this. I'd like to see Hampshire do this, huh? Jake, huh, Colin? That's useful because now we see that there's a greater uh, theta max than we would have had before hard to see where it falls because they don't have the same center. So 
this is the absolute now shear stress, maximum shear stress we expect. So now we have a loading such that we expect our maximum normal stress to be the 84 megapascals. That's the, the greatest point we saw um, the, on the original circle. The Z direction didn't change that. We now have a sigma min that we know to be less than it was before. So if we have a material that's weak in a particular direction, uh, then we want to make sure that that's our Z direction. And now we have a new maximum expected shear stress of what? 37 megapascals. It's just half of the new min and max. Uh, half, half the diameter of the new circle. All right, then there's, there's a thousand angles and other things we can pick off of there. Um, it gets really hard, I think, to visualize this stuff. So here's our original direction. We have sigma y. We have a negative shear stress. So I'll go ahead and draw that in as we'd expect it. And we had a sigma x like that. Now, off at minus 26 degrees, oh, I'm going to run out of space as I draw this. Let me redraw it here. Alright, so we have a, a 36, about twice that there, and then a negative shear stress. And then at um, about 26 degrees, we have now um, an element in that direction on which we've now got, remember that was this minimum shear stress, but that's not minimum anymore, I mean sorry, normal stress, it's now uh, maybe intermediate ninety degrees to that phase we've got the maximum which was eighty four remember this is all just from the original more circle. And no shear stresses in those directions. And then 45 degrees to that, remember we had the sigma average all the way around and the maximum shear stress. So if I draw that, here's just another way to look at it. There's a 45 degree, so that's a 45 degree isosceles triangle, that gives us the theta s direction, which was the, the 54, that was our original sigma average, and the uh, 
intermediate maximum shear stresses. Which was 30. It's getting fun, isn't it? So that's, I guess, tau max. This is tau max absolute. I think that's what our book does. Every book is to see it a different way. And then in the opposite direction from that, bring in the Z part of it. We'll take another uh, plain view of it. And no, I do not expect you to, to uh, do this for the test. It gets confusing fast, I think. There's sigma Z. That's now the same sigma max. We're just looking at it in a different direction now. That's that new center point, which is is what uh, ten plus thirty is forty seven. New center and close this that that new third circle we have, and then with the new absolute maximum, shear stress, which was the 37. See how easy that is to picture in your mind? We love these 3D problems, we always have. The book has ways they look at those in 3D, but that's impossible to draw. So that's just an idea of what we do with the third third dimension. Remember, in this, these ones we are taking there to be no shear stress on the seat faces. I'm not even going to ask if there's any questions. Uh, but for the way we do it, it's just a matter of plotting that next point and then figuring out the geometry pieces to see if you do have greater shear stress. There's greater shear stress now that we originally would not have gotten. We'd only have thought it was 30, but in three dimensions now it's 37 degrees. So uh, if you're laying down carbon fiber with a particular direction to it, you want to pay attention to that. The 47, that's the location of the center of the new circle. A lot of pieces to it, a lot of uh, things there, a lot of different directions come into it. Okay, but that'll suffice. Mm -hmm. That wraps it up. So, 